welcome back to pure or welcome back to evil and intoxicated Let me pull. No. who are we what are we where are we what are we doing <laughs> well we are just wrapping up with the ultimate fighter season 27 episode 6 i'm joined right above me is ted check what's going on ted how you doing today eddie i'm doing great man how you doing i'm doing good doing good you know what this episode first let me start by saying this because um I saw something tonight that really surprised me, and I'm I'm kind of happy I, I saw it. So hmm. Jedi Goodman, I don't know if, you know if you guys are all on Twitter, but Jedi Goodman, Jed, or is it Jed I? Like Jedi, I don't know. You know, like Star Wars Jed I. I think he, I think that's why he does that. Why he includes his middle initial, so people can call him Jed I Goodman. Huh? You might be you might be right on that one. That's just my thinking. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry, Eddie. But yeah, so he tweeted out tonight that this season Ultimate Fighter is actually doing really well, Ted. And for people out there that don't know, ESPN, who we're gonna be talking about this in just a little bit, um, right. they just signed UFC uh, TV deal. And we, we're gonna be running down all this and much more, but you know what? I, I just wanted to bring this to light to everybody and I got the numbers right here, Ted. And uh, you were even saying going into this season that you thought this was gonna be a successful season and you're, a a longtime fan who, who's never really been into the show. No, I, well, I mean, I, I have from time to time, uh, but uh, you know, then then I then I lose interest. I'll be honest, I do. I, I've lost interest many times. So, uh, but but I, I've come back to it. So, and and yeah, I mean, I thought with Stipe and with DC, they're popular guys, and also with the kind of the hook of hey, everybody that's on this thing, that's in this thing, is undefeated. Yeah, uh, I, I thought that might pull some people in as well. So the numbers for this, and, and if you guys have been following the Ultimate Fighter, you've been seeing them just plummet and plummet and plummet. But this season, uh, you know, the text or the tweet, I should say, from Jetty Goodman, it says, From Fox Sports Ultimate Fighter 27, Episode 5 averaged 362,000 viewers on live plus uh, DVR, an increase of 106% over live and uh, live and uh, pre-recorded. Highest gain in live over three seasons. Uh, the last couple episodes, uh, episode one had 298,000, which was an increase of 48%. Episode two, 296. Episode three, 366. And episode four, 357. It's just going up and up. Oh, you got the cat. <laughs> I got the cat. Or he's got me. I don't know. You know, and I got to bring something up about about cats later. That's a little upsetting, but I'll bring that up in just a little bit. But Ted, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, are, are you surprised that the the views are going up this season? It, this is what the Ultimate Fighter needs, if you ask me. Is this going to save the Ultimate Fighter? Or what, what are your thoughts? Um, well, like I said, I, I, I was kind of hoping that it, that it would increase, and and um, you know, from from last season, I couldn't even tell you what the theme or whatever it was of last season but you know it, it it's good that they built it around hey look all these fighters are undefeated so somebody's always got to go actually everybody's always got to go except for one featherweight and one lightweight um so I, I think that you know that that kind of ups the ante and then like i said steve is a popular champ dc is a popular champ and, and these two guys are going to go head to head at the end of this thing um so yeah i was kind of thinking that maybe there would be some type of boost but Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't this it? Because uh, once they move over to ESPN, uh, they're going to just go with uh, Dana White Tuesday night fight, and they're not going to have the Ultimate Fighter anymore, or, or will they still? I believe the deal ends in December of this year, and then ESPN will pick it up in January. But right now, Ted, see, it's very confusing. They might. They're okay. okay. So they're having the tryouts right now. I know a, a couple of fighters I've, I've interviewed in the past that are out yeah. there right now. And Chris Cyborg is out there right now uh, greeting, greeting all the fighters. She's what? She's greeting all the fighters that are coming in for the season to try out. Okay. But the thing is, we aren't sure if they're going to even go through with this season because, uh, you know, there's been no word. Uh, ESPN hasn't set, uttered a word about the Ultimate Fighter, so it does look like this or next season will be the last, but and who knows what these numbers, that's why I brought up the numbers, Ted. Uh, who knows with the numbers changing, maybe they can put it on, you know, an application or something. I don't know. I don't know what the future of the ultimate fighter is, but I, I do, uh, 
do like Dana White Susan a contender series this day and age. I think that is the direction, the right direction to go. But yeah. uh, I mean, that's that's what I was thinking, too. Um, maybe, you know, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the first one to say this, but uh, there goes the cat again. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe the formats played out. You know what I mean? After after, well, this, uh, the next one will be 28, 28 seasons. That is something to be proud of. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe the format is just played out. You know what I'm saying? That, um, and and uh, maybe they need to put all their efforts into Dana White, Tuesday Night Fight Series, and, uh, you know, maybe even make that longer than it is. Yeah, or- there's only a couple of fights on there. But nonetheless, let us know what you guys think about this on Twitter at Evil Under Dash Echo. That's E-V-I-L underscore E-C-C-O. And also Ted Check's Twitter at Ted Check. That's T-E-D-C-Z-E-C-H. All right, so let's get into this episode, Ted. Episode 6. Went down tonight. Uh, you no know, recapping last week, really quick. Mike Trezano defeat Thailand uh, in a second round TKO. Moving into this episode, we had Suman Makatran, whose older brother is actually in the UFC, and he shared his backstory a little bit tonight. He was going to be going up against um, Steele. Ricky Steele. Ricky Steele. Who like honestly, a- going into this episode, I was I was kind of rooting for Suman. Yeah, um, well, yeah, you know, I mean, they're both likable guys, you know, and, and uh, that, that's, that's kind of the point of the Ultimate Fighter when they go back. They, you know, they, they make them human. You know, that they're, they're more than just fighters. They're more than just, you know, guys, uh, you know, shedding blood in the, in the cage. They're real people. They have families. They have, uh, you know, goals. They have ups and downs just like everybody else. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like both the guys. Ricky Steele, I, like I said, it sounds like a made-up name. It sounds like if I, if I was like an adult performer, I'd be Ricky Steele. <laughs> <laughs> or the lead singer of a, of a country band or something, right? Sure, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, or Buck Naked or, you know, something like that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, so I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, whoever wins, wins. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, just I was hoping for a good fight. All right, so going into this episode, we got to see a little beef happen at the beginning, Ted, um, between a couple of the fighters that went down. And, you know, you got Luis Pena rolling around on, on a freaking scooter on one foot, ready to throw down, ready to stand up for what's right. But it was kind of funny, man, because Joe, you know, reacting to, what was it, Thailand? Or no, not Thailand. Who was it? Uh, that was uh, Delaney. He, he was freaking out. And Joe freaks out, smashes his coffee. He's like, dude. Like, you haven't even fought yet, and you're starting problems. Joe kind of put it like, it kind of seemed like he wanted out. He was going to start issues outside. But the way Delaney put it, he was like, I'm just trying to get in these guys' heads. What did you take of this? Um, well, it was very convincing. If that, if, if the whole thing was a work, you know what I mean? If, if the whole thing was, uh, you know, if the whole thing was a rib, as they say in, in professional wrestling, you know, where, where you know, he's just, he's just, just trolling people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job. It was a very convincing one. You know, it really sounded like he wanted to go outside and fight, uh, which is ridiculous because uh, they're there to fight for money, not not uh, you know for for just uh, shits and giggles. You know, uh, to settle some ridiculous beef manufactured out of nothing. And that's what they're bringing up. They're like, he's just here for camera time. That's all he's here for. Right, and the other thing is, he, you know, if he has such a great life, why is he tr- putting himself through this? You know, it's it's the, it's the most difficult thing that that a fighter can do is to be away from from your loved ones, quarantined, you know, with no internet, uh, for however many weeks it is, right? And, and he's and he's saying, you know, he's got all this money, and come on, you know, I don't think so. I'm I'm uh, I'm calling bullshit on that. Yeah, you know, I think he's playing the part that, um, you know, this season kind of needs. I mean, as much as we like to hate these guys, let's look back, let's look back at some of the other uh, seasons. There's always been one guy. You're going all the way back to, what, Koscheck on season. He's the Koscheck of the season, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, that's fine. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's always one. You're right. And, okay, I mean, it's... You know, it, it's interesting. It, it uh, makes the world go round, right? I mean, I, I've always said that, uh, you know, when people say, well, I don't like the arrogant fighters or I don't like this kind of fighter or this fighter needs more personality, there's room for everybody. 
there's room for you know there's room for for the Conor McGregor's and there's but then you know you got the Stipe Miocic's where you know he he's just a, a hard working blue collar kind of guy. Well, I, you saw Cormier. You know Cormier is trying to get inside his head. Oh yeah, saying oh. win, the belt, win the belt and then give it back to you and then you can fight Kane whatever. Run in his mouth and and uh, which is fine, fine. There's a, great. And then Steve is like, yeah, okay, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, all right, thanks, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, just, just totally, it just, just doesn't affect him. I think Stipe is more and more in fight mode mentally because, you know, DC, the way that he's been acting, and I've been loving the way he's been acting. He's been, you know, freeing out. But, you know, that could be a, set, a sign of weakness to a lot of, uh, you know, fighters like Stipe looking at him like, what are you trying to be, a clown right now? But at the same time, I'm loving their interactions so far this season. What are your thoughts on on the coaching uh, so far. I've got to do one thing for Stipe Miocic uh, on here. <laughs> Miocic. Sorry, I just had to do that. Uh, the, the coaching, I mean, they both seem very into it. They, they both seem, uh, you know, um, supportive of the fighters. You know, uh, yeah, Cormier is a, is a little more outgoing and, and a little bit more emotional. But uh, I, I, Steve A's right in there with everybody too. You know what I mean? He, he I think, I think uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he cares about the fighters just as much. But um, yeah, just going back to your other point real quick about about Cormier. Yeah, it seems like when you put when you put Cormier and Jones together, Jones is the aggressor. You know, like it's, as far as the trash talk, Cormier and Steve A. Then Cormier becomes the aggressor. He's the, he's the guy that that's trying to be the alpha. You know, at least a verbal alpha, but it, it, I think he's wasting his time because it's clearly not having an effect on on Stipe Miocic at all. I, I think the big factor here is that you got DC there. Yeah, they have an upcoming fight, and I'm excited for it. But really, Kane's been there, hasn't uttered a freaking word. That is scary. That is that scary. So you have Kane there the entire time, just you know, glaring over. That's 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 the boss. That's the master level. Uh, you know, I might get backslash for that because it's been a while. But going back to UFC 200, Cain Velasquez throwing freaking wheel kicks against Travis Brown. I want to see Stipe versus Cain more than I want to see DC. But, uh, you know, I like that fact with Cain just in the back. That's scary, Ted. Uh, it's scary if he's healthy. You yeah. know what I mean? Is the guy ever going to fight again because he keeps getting injured and then he keeps having surgery and then he keeps having surgery and then he keeps getting injured and back and forth and back and forth? Pretty soon the guy's going to be 40, for God's sake. I don't know how old he is right now, but, you know, uh, I mean, you know, an MMA career is not that long. And he's been around for a little while. But, uh, yeah, you, you could make that argument that he's he's still the, the man to beat, so to speak. Uh, but also, Stipe does have the record now for heavyweight title defenses. Yeah, which is so crazy. So, but so crazy. but I, I would think, you'd think that Stipe... My part of it, part of it, maybe not all of them, but part of them is thinking, you know what, a, a real feather in the cap. I, I could really kind of cement my legacy if I could beat Cain Velasquez. Yeah. I, I'm sure he's thinking that this is the guy that I need to beat to really prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm the greatest world champ. I'm world champ. I'm world champ. I'm world champion. You know what I mean? That's I, I, I bet you. Stipe's thinking about that. Stipe can make some big things happen if he can get by DC. He's even talked about John Bones, and I think that would be an exciting fight. But nonetheless, let us know what you guys also think about this on Twitter. Tell what's going on in the chat room. Ah, uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so we're talking about DC and talking about Gus because I guess Luke Rockhold is injured. Um, apparently, I didn't – you heard that, right? Did yeah, you? he's not even at ATT. He's not even at there, so you can't throw that at him. Okay. So no, but or not so, ATT, um, AKA, AKA. Sorry, AKA. I, I, it's, it's all alphabet soup. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, it's, okay. So so uh, Nicholas Moss is saying, okay, look, Rockhold is out. So you've got DC versus Miocic. Now you've got uh, uh, Alexander Gustafson. Should Gustafson's play be that he sits out and because you know because Rockhold was going to fight Gus? Should Gus just say, look, I'm going to see how this whole Miocic. Cormier thing plays out, and if Cormier loses, well, uh, it's back to the light heavyweight division. And and uh, you think do you think Gus should? I think he should wait. I think I think Gus can do that. Uh, hell, he only fights like once every three years anyway. So what's what's another 
you know, six months, nine months, whatever. So wait, wait and see how the DC uh, Miocic thing plays out, and and then uh, just challenge for the for the light heavyweight title. I want Gus to stay at light heavyweight, man. I, I don't want. I don't like any of the other matchups, really. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Like, stay at light heavyweight, but since since he, since he lost Rockhold as an opponent, don't try, just don't try to fill up the, the space with some other opponent. Just wait, wait for DC, and and provided he loses to Stipe, he'll still have the light heavyweight championship. So then Gus can fight DC. How motivated are people to see Gus versus DC again? I okay, mean, that's, DC that's, flipped him around on his finger. Poof. So, so maybe Gus needs to prove himself a little bit more. And he has. He has. I mean, look what he did to Glover Teixeira. Say what you will about Glover Teixeira, but the yes. uppercuts that night. And then you he know, proposed to his wife. Things are good for, for Gus, man. Things are going good for him. Yeah, but you know what? Now I'm kind of seeing it the other way. Maybe he does <laughs> need to fight somebody else first before he gets to DC. One more fight. One more fight against the top five guy. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe he still needs to... To do something, I don't know, um, but uh, Stipe Miocic, not the real Stipe, but you know, nevertheless, who knows? Uh, he wants to see Volkov versus Kane. He wants to see that fight. There's no time. There's no time. Speaking of, he has time, man. There's no time. Yeah, Augustus said he he doesn't have time to wait if he's going to be fighting him. <laughs> that would be a fun one. That would be a fun one to watch. Yeah, that's a that's a good one to, to bring up. But really, um. I mean, he's coming off a loss uh, to DC, and we kind of realize that he's not at that level. But uh, no, not not uh, not not no time. No, Alexander Volkov. Oh, the, the older the, guy, right? The older uh, heavyweight, former uh, Bellator, I think, uh, champion, right? The Six submission, four. yeah, yeah, the submission guy. Two hundred and fifty pounds. Came coming off of a win over uh, Fabricio Verdun by knockout. Damn. Where on, is he ranked right now? I don't even see him ranked. Uh, he's not ranked. He's number three. Oh, yeah, he is. Drago. Yeah, there he is. That's right. And he's coming off that, that win over Verdum. Forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, he's a striking jiu-jitsu guy. All right, all right, all right. So, yeah. Fight win streak uh, for them in the UFC. That's right. I forgot about that guy. Dark horse. Real dark horse. In that division, man. Probably not for much longer if he keeps on winning. So listen, let's move on with the Ultimate Fighter episode six. Suman Makatran going in there. Like I said, his brother. They're they're kind of giving their backstories. And what it seemed to me was, um, you know, they're both sitting on the couch. His brother is high as hell, and he's kind of just like, you know, making fun of it, just throwing it out there. Which seems like how a lot of these fighter stories start is on their couch watching the UFC, going, "I <laughs> want to do that," doing romper house in the living room. That's how a lot of these fighters' stories start. But, uh, you know, so inspiring that his brother cleaned up his act and then ended up making it to the UFC. When he was sharing that story, Dad, you know, seeing it in the hot tub full of guys, I mean, <laughs> it was a little weird. They're all sitting in the hot tub. Just maybe it wasn't weird, but. Uh, no Hashtag no homo. You know. Hashtag no homo. But I'm loving the bond that all these guys are having in this house. You have Luis Pena, you know, giving the Remember the Titans speeches. You have yeah. Suman Makatran giving these. You know, you you it, you can be at the bottom and come to the top and fight in the UFC. I'm loving it, man. I'm loving what this uh this this uh season has to offer. Now you also have Jay Cutinella, who's on the sideline saying, you know, yeah, you guys got your drama going on, but I want back in this thing, and I want to approach Dana White, and he does. And I think that was very brave of Jay Cutinella to do. Yep, there goes the cat again. Hey. Uh yeah, no, it was, and and then we saw the other guy, the really uh, kooky dude, uh, with the with the handlebar mustache. He did the same thing. He approached Dana White and said, "Hey, could you, could you consider me as well?" And at the time, we can't really get into, get into what happens after that until we talk about the fight. Um, but yeah, he he approached them. Out of those two guys, man, uh, you know they both know. And this season, Ultimate Fighter. I mean, Jay Cutinella, when he went backstage to talk to Dana. What did he say? He said, uh, no, there's no waiting around. He said, this show presents opportunities. And it does. This show always presents opportunities when fighters get injured. You know, and, and Luis Pena out right now. We do not think he's going to be coming back. But Dana White's already promised him a fight in the UFC. So Jay Cucinella stepping up to the opportunity. Well, um, and 
well, yeah, let's let's get into the fight because there's there's some fallout from that. Okay, uh, yeah. So let's let's, let's jump right a, into that. There may be a third individual that would want to throw his hat in the ring, although he is he's a featherweight. He might want to try to take that spot, or there might be another spot. Well, anyway, let's yeah, let's let's, let's get into it. This, All right, so yeah, let's let's get into this fight. Suman Makachan going into this man, I thought, you know, like I said, he, I was favoring him. DC was or Stipe was saying to his fighter, which I believe was 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 Suman, right? What? Uh, no, Suman uh, Maktarian is is uh, is Stipe's fighter. Yeah, that's what I said. So, oh, okay. my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah and so, and Steel is Steel is with DC. Yep. So Stipe was trying to tell him he was like, I want you to push forward, I want you to pressure, 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 and use angles. I mean, classic DC. I mean, a classic Stipe style where you kind of. You know, you're you're making that game plan. You're using angles, but right. you know, Suman Makatran, man, I don't know if it was a great idea for him to stand and trade because he was saying going into this fight, you know, I got power in these hands. But his opponent, you know, Ricky, he's more of a stand-up guy. So I was a little surprised going into this fight that he was, you know, standing up with them, especially in this first round. Um, how did you score this round? Uh, what did you see in this round that stood out to you? Well, let's see. Okay, so so yeah, so Ricky Steele is a, is has got a karate background. So he's he's like another. Uh, Wonder Boy or, um, you know, uh, Leota Machida. And, uh, and so that, I understand why Stipe would say pressure the guy because you don't want to give him a lot of space because he's got all these crazy kicks. He needs the room in order to throw those kicks. We even saw an up kick landed too. Uh, from the ground? Uh, from Ricky Steele in the second round. Uh, mm-hmm. They were both standing, and he landed a really nice up kick. Oh, oh! I thought you meant up kick, as in you're on the ground and you kick up. Oh no, no! no. I'm talking about straight uh, Anderson Silva Vitor, Leota yeah. Vitor. Like a keep, like a, like a, a front push. Yeah, kick. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, I got you. Uh, all right, so so I think Stipe was correct in saying, uh, you know, Maktarian, you you need to push forward, be aggressive, and crowd this guy. But the thing is. Um, what I did notice, and, and although he's got a number of submissions to his to his credit, Mokhtarian, he doesn't seem to have the wrestling skills. He, I, I, don't, I haven't seen any of his other fights where he's gotten those submissions, and, and they're crazy. He did the TP. The TP, he got... And, um, and he, did a, he did a twister. twister. How did he get in those positions? Did somebody take him down first, or was he just against guys who didn't know any wrestling and he could he could take them down because Steele said he has he has some type of wrestling background as well. Uh Mokhtari needs to go back to the drawing board and wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Because he really didn't he didn't he couldn't seal it. He could not get a takedown on the guy. Um that would have been huge uh in in that first round. Yeah, whether you know, it was like a single, a double or or uh or like a Greco from from the top. He couldn't he couldn't uh he couldn't get any type of takedown. The only chance he had was uh, he, he tried to sink in a guillotine, but he couldn't quite uh, nail that one. There was a lot of clinch work going on. The ref even had to, to step in uh, halfway through the yeah. first round. Jason, It's Jason Herzog, right? He's there, he's like, okay, guys, need more work. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Stay active. Well, Stay active, guys. Okay. okay. It's like, I mean, it's like as soon as they clinched, he, he was 30 seconds in. He's like, okay, I need you to work harder. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to separate you if you, don't do, if you don't do that. Okay. You know, and it's like. Get out of here for a second. You know? <laughs> Look, I get upset when it's too long. Everybody has their own threshold for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for when the fighters are are in the clinch too long and they're not and they're not doing anything. He does it as as soon as he gets the thought in his head. He doesn't give it a second. I, I agree with that. A I agree second. with that. Give him a second to do something for God's sake. Some people you know? might like that, but you know, in this case, I'm I'm kind of happy he stepped in. They only had two rounds, but I agree with you. I agree with you, Tim. Yeah, so it is just, it's like, I think, you know what I think it was, Eddie? I think it's that, okay, usually when we watch a UFC, whether it's a UFC on Fox, a pay-per-view, whatever, we can't hear the ref. You know, so we just see the ref coming in. We're not sure if he's saying anything to the fighters or not. But in this setting, we can hear the, we can clearly hear the ref because it's <laughs> quiet in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that maybe that's what got me like, okay, guys, I need you to do something. Isn't okay. it like so weird? Like I, I brought this up to Matt Matt Bassett last week. You know, they they do the same thing. They're at the same gym or the same place for uh, Dana Wade's Tuesday Night Contender Series. 
There's no one really there besides friends and family. It's like you're fighting in a gym, like a high school auditorium. A little awkward in there. It's pretty awkward in there, isn't it? It's hard to get hyped up in a way. Like it right. I mean, like I'm, a fight. I'm all for uh, intimate settings, you know, uh, small places that are packed full of people. Yeah, and yeah. That's, that, that's what I think they should do is pack these things a little bit more. It's kind of a turnoff. It really is a turnoff. Uh, and I remember, like, I, I've said this before, but, like, in high school when we would watch it, girls would walk by and they, they didn't even know. They were like, this is the UFC. This sucks. Well, there's that's no one there. Like, no, it, it's just confusing to a lot of people. So, yeah. I don't know. But going into the, the end of that first round, Ted, how did you score it? Because I had it 10-9 for Ricky Steele. Oh, yeah. First first round, for sure. For sure. Second round was a bit closer, probably still for Steele, and, you know, the judges thought so. Um, but, uh, yeah, the first round was not a 10-8, but it was it was a uh, definitely, definitely, definitely a 10-9. Yeah. Yeah, the second round a little closer. I'll give, you know, a little bit more in the second round. But I think Ricky still kind of got, you know, more comfortable. But at the same time, I thought that he was at the same time very tired at that point as well. Same with Suman Makatran, who came out fresh. But both these guys were throwing some big punches throughout right. the round that really winded them out. And then once again, we saw a lot of clinching, a lot of tying up. And once again, Ted, we saw Jason Herzog, and you guys are going to have to do something, and split them up. Hey, guys, I need you to work a little harder. Yeah, uh, well, let's see. Okay, so I, just going back to the – remember something about the first round. I, this is, I noticed this in the first round. I'm not sure if it happened so much in the second. At least twice uh, when Steele would throw a low kick, here comes uh, Maktarian with, with an overhand right. I liked that. I liked, I liked that he was doing that, um, and, and so he needed to do more of that. And, and also, I think it was in the second round, his corner was yelling, we need combos here. I just you, you about know, to say that. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. You, you're not going to win this thing. One punch, one kick. Yeah. You need to. Da, 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 da. You need to. You need to pull some uh, some RDA shit. You know, some some forty punch combos. We see this That's, a lot kidding. on the Ultimate Fighter, though. We see a lot of one punch, no combos. A lot. We see that a lot on the Ultimate Fighter. Right, and and you know maybe they're tired. Okay, great. Um, I mean, not great, but I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll take that into account, but. Uh, yeah, he really needed to um, to continue to push the pace and uh, and to really uh, to, to throw more combos, man. If he wanted to stand with him, which yeah, like you said, I thought it was a little strange, and I thought I thought maybe um, he was he, you know it was kind of a swerve. Like I'm gonna say I'm gonna stand with the guy, and he's gonna think that I'm gonna stand with him, and then I'm not gonna stand with him. You know, it was like one of the, like a trick, but no, it wasn't a trick. He really did want to stand with him. I don't know. Going into that second round too, Ted, uh, did you think that you know, we were going to see a turnaround, maybe a third round, or did you think what we saw was well, predictable? Well, again, Eddie, it was my – I'm looking at the – I'm looking at my oh, yeah. watch. Going, nope, nope, nope. You know, I mean, they started it at the bottom of the hour. They started it at, you know, uh, 1030. But, you know, you, you do a five-minute round, then, then you do, you know, five minutes of commercials or whatever, then you do the second round, and then by that time, it was like 10 of, and I'm like, yeah, no, no, no third round. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen a third round. Yeah, I think what really changed that second round was, like you said, the corner saying, throw more combo shots at two minutes and 35 seconds of that round. Uh, that's what he did, and I think that's what really did it. But like I said before, and like you were bringing up, a takedown would have been awesome for Suman. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get it. The guys okay. both got real gassed out. Both judges scoring this fight for Ricky Steele um, moving forward. But well, we come to find out, Ted, at the end of this uh, fight, we have an injury from Ricky right. Steele. Right. He's, it looked like, well, possibly two different things because he was saying he had, he had trouble with his eyesight. Remember? And the, and the woman who was asking him thought he was joking. She's like, no, 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 I really need to know. Uh, right? What, didn't Because he, he says, oh, I'm, I can see three of you. And, yeah, uh, yep. that's what he said uh, after the fight as well to Suman. He's like, there are three of you in there. Right, right. So, But I think when he said it to that woman, I, I think she thought maybe he was kidding. She's like, no, 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 I really need to know to see whether I'm going to take you to the hospital or not. Yeah. And he said, well, I'm definitely, I definitely need my, my foot checked out because I think it's broken. Because there was some foot stomps that uh, Mokhtarian mm. uh, gave him there. 
which was a good idea. You know, it's just it old just, school. It just wasn't enough. You know, there, there was it just he didn't he didn't build on that. You know, and I I don't know, man. I I, I guess I was kind of rooting for Mokhtarian in a way. Um, you know, we we were going to talk to him here. Yeah, and, yeah, that's something that we needed to bring up. Uh, he was supposed to join us here tonight, guys. Unfortunately, he backed out like last, literally last minute, uh, this afternoon tonight. I'm, I'm sorry, I was, I was, yeah, oh yeah, right, right, Maktarian, yeah, Suman, he was supposed to be on here, and and then it was kind of a last minute thing. Something must have, must have come up. Uh, yeah, filling me cracking here, filling me cracking. Uh, he's being a goof. He, he's YouTube. saying, he's talking about you, Eddie, and he's saying all sorts of ridiculous stuff. <laughs> Oh, just say it, just say it, because that's the, that's the, all right, all right, that's I, I, what you I'm get to put yourself on YouTube. Tell the lady at the bottom she has <laughs> to lose the beard. Oh, God. There's nothing lady like about you, Ed. Hey, Phil McCracken, man. I think that deserves a little tip, a little tip money, a little, you need me to flash myself for a tip or something here? Right. What's going yeah, on? You fill me cracking, you give us 10 bucks and Eddie will whoop, he'll I'll rip fill, up his shirt. I'll fill you cracking. <laughs> That's what I'll do. But yeah, Ted, uh, at the end of this episode, we saw uh, Gunther approach Dana White. I don't think Gunther knew, or did he know, that uh, Ricky still had an injury? Or was uh, he approaching him for a lure? Are, are they both in the same weight class? Are they both featherweight? I, I think he was. I think he was going for the vying for the other for for um, Luis's spot. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But but I mean, with with Ricky potentially out does that mean that Suman Mokhtarian could get back in because Dana White was was impressed with his fight even though he lost Dana White was impressed with it so well let's think about that Ted out of the guys who have lost who do you think uh, you you pick Suman I know like I've been talking to Suman daily but I don't know if he's my first pick necessarily for guys to get back in there I can't think of them all off the top of my head but who would you pick instead? Well, I mean, you, we really haven't seen much from Gunther. That, that's the thing. I mean, not, what was it, nine seconds or something like that that Joe Giannotti uh, got him in? Um, Man, the guy's just Cipe, so weird. Yeah. He said, it freaks me out. He's so weird. I think I think, <laughs> I think Jay White be like, nah, fuck that guy. He's too weird. Not, He's got not, those crazy <laughs> eyes going. and, and, yeah. and so like. But, I mean, Stipe, Stipe's got his back, man. He's like, this kid brings it on the table. I think uh, – you know, I think the fans would get behind Gunther getting brought back in. You also have, uh, well, not Brad Katana, the other kid with like the overlap uh, mustache. I can't remember his name. For the life of me, but he trains with like Rob Emerson and those boys. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I think I would pick Jake Cuginella. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. You, you can't mix your heart up with your with your with who you think is is. You know what I mean? It's hard. Right. You can't separate it. Yeah. 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 Gotta um, keep them separated. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They need to do that remix with <laughs> yeah, keep them separated. Yeah. Yeah. The king of the fight. <laughs> anyway. Over 18 seconds, I will split up the fight. So, yeah, so I, I thought it was a good episode. Um and then we we got we got another fight, uh DC. Got to choose again. First off, who the fuck are these guys they picked for next week's fight? I haven't even seen them once this season. Am I crazy? No, 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 no. You're you're spot on, man. Who I, is I don't it? Smolin, Smolin versus... Did you get the next name? No. No. <laughs> no, I did not. And I'm so sorry. Like, as a professional journalist, me and you should know. I, we, I swear we, to God, I literally have not seen these. Like, I was like, who, who are these two guys that they're... Who are these guys? Yeah. Who are these people? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, because somebody tell me, because I'd like to know. Uh, I'm <laughs> you're you're on fire tonight, Tim. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll be here all What week. is up with air food? Your waitresses. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't know, but we're, we're going to find out. And, yeah, yeah. shame on us for, for not knowing. Um, you never know. These these two guys next week could, could well, one of them could, could end up being the champ. And then we'll really uh, look like idiots. You know, last closing thoughts here, Ted, moving forward for next week. Um, you know, there's a lot of exciting fighters on this season, but I really hope that Lewis's foot fixes or, or something there happens because I, I'm really liking, out of all the fighters, I think Lewis is, uh, 
is the one that's really shining to people. What are, what are your thoughts? Who's really standing out most to you this season at, at this point? Half, what are we halfway through about? Uh, are you Six. talking like personality wise, or you, like, like you who, fight wise, or both? Who, who are you rooting for fight wise? It's still in it, and really, two of the guys who've won have, are out. So there's really what three other people that are really in there. I mean, you got Joe Ginetti, right? You got Bryce, our boy Thug Nasty. You got Lewis, who got pulled out. You got the kid tonight, Ricky Still, who got pulled out. Um, you got Brad Katona, the Superman guy with the glasses. I got a Superman, Clark Kent dude. Yeah. So, um, you know, you only got three guys to choose from. Who, who are you behind? I, are you behind Bryce or what? Yeah, yeah. He's my boy. He's my horse. I think I'm sure. behind. No, we interviewed him. And so I, I got to go with him. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, and beyond that, he's, he's, you know, he's a skilled fighter. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what do you guys know? Let us know on Twitter, evil under dash tackle. That's E-V-I-L underscore E-C-C-L or on Instagram at Pure Evil MMA. Or let Ted Check know at Ted Check on Twitter. That's T-E-D-C-Z-E-C-H. Ted, last but not least, we do the every episode. Quick rating out of 10. I'm giving tonight's episode a solid 7. Uh, rating on you? It's going to go with 7 too. Yeah. I think falls right there. Well, All right. So moving tough. forward, Ted, what do we have in store for the rest of this podcast? What are we running down? Uh, you wanted to talk about, uh, well, <laughs> UFC Liverpool, for one thing. Yes, uh, UFC um, Liverpool predictions coming at the end. I did bring my coffee down here. Yeah, uh, UFC Cheers. Liverpool. And um, I suggested uh, Fabricio Verdum, I mean Verdum, <laughs> uh, getting flagged by USADA. Or Kobe spiking his, uh, spiking his food or whatever. Well, Who I was about that. You have a theory. Let's let's start with that one. But what else are we running down? Of course, Bellator 200 and the change with Crow Cop. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. That and uh, hold on one second. I, I I have to. And the ESPN deal, of course, are going to be running down that as well. But let's jump into Fabricio Verdu. Well, let me grab. Hold on. First off, before we get into anything, let me take this later out of my new rat's mouth. Hey, Eddie, if you ever get really, really angry at any of your rats and you want to get rid of no. one, I have a cat uh, oh. that uh, could help. Oh, you know, Ted, <laughs> like I said at the beginning of the show, I, have some, I don't really want to start in bad energy. But this morning I saw the most awful thing, and I thought of you, man, and, and the kitten that you had <laughs> not too long ago. You know, I was pulling out oh. of my driveway this morning, and my neighbor was halfway pulled out of her driveway. And I slowed down to see what it was. Until like leaning over something. I was like, what the hell is that? The little gray thing flopping around. And I was like, it's a squirrel probably. As I focused my eyes, it was a, a little kit, a little gray kit. Like a, it literally looked like a, a kitten out of a calendar. It was, and she ran it over. It was sleeping underneath her tire, like at uh, night, okay. you know, cause the engine was so warm, was, but there's a lot of feral cats around here, man. But it was so sad. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the kitten didn't make it, but man, that's how I started my morning. And man, it was it was rough. It was rough to see. But on a lighter note, guys, I got two new pet rats this week of my own. No Angie Jabs attached to them. Uh, the other rats are with Angie, but I got two rats, and the listeners actually named them Ted. This one is Bella, and the other one is Puff, and they are living on my bed. Uh, last announcement. Last but not least, I know that we have a new studio here. You guys are are seeing this studio if you're watching the video cast, but I'm moving again, Ted. Um, again, Eddie? Holy crap, dude. Yes, yeah, so we're going to get some some new space, so I'll keep you guys updated on that at Pure Evil <laughs> MMA. Um, also, really quick, I spoke with Jillian Robertson today, who's fighting this weekend at UFC Liverpool. So uh, if you guys want to check that out, check it out, Pure Evil MMA. Um, let's jump into Fabricio Verdum's news, Ted. I'm going to send it over to you. All right, hold on. First, I have to block Phil and me Kraken because he's talking about ass shots, and we just don't have any time for that. All right. Um, so I'm just going to, I guess, remove. <laughs> there are shows out there for people like that, though, <laughs> that want to do stuff like that. We got, uh, yeah, really. He's, he's, like, talking about ass shots. He's asking you. I said, I said, dude, look at your own ass. You know? <laughs> Bang, you got the banderang. That's it. You banned. You banned. You banned from the store. What is it? The banderang? Banarang. 
the banner rang. I love it. You know, the Verdoomerang. Yes. Yes. The boomerang, so it's the bannerang. So you're just you're banning people with the <laughs> You gotta get a graphic. I'll make a graphic for that. So if you we ban someone, I'll press a button and we'll go <laughs> circle around <laughs> and then pull them out. That would be great. But uh you know, the guy could have at least left a tip, man. I mean, if you're going to talk this shit, leave a tip. But uh, moving forward, jeez. He's asking, oh, are you, are you straight or are you lesbian? I said, give us 10 bucks and we'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Some, some incentive. So, so he gets, and not because of that, but because he, you know, he continues. To, he's obsessed with ass shots. Uh, so and that's it. He can take his business elsewhere. Yeah, there's uh, other shows. There's other shows for people like that. I can recommend a couple. But uh, this is mainly for yeah. the diehard MMA fans. I want to talk about what's actually going on in the okay. sport. So the, the topic was, okay, so the, here's, my, <clears throat> here's my theory. So, okay, uh, with um, uh, Alex, Alistair Overeem, we had the horse meat, right? Remember the horse meat? <laughs> How are you getting yeah. so big? A horse meat, horse meat, right? Frank Mir gets busted in Australia. What was it? Kangaroo meat. Kangaroo meat. And then uh, Canelo Alvarez. Oh, it was the cows. The cows and the Mexican cows were infused with something or whatever. So, so I Googled. I said, what is – I want to know an animal or animals that are native to South America because it's Brazil, right? Brazil uh, native animal. So I came up with – it's a real animal, the capybara. Well, okay. it's, it's like capybara, B-A-R-A, C-A-P-Y-B-A-R-A. -A. Was it rodent? It's Mammal? the world's largest rodent. It's a friggin' it's a rat the size of like a German shepherd. Oh god. A war it's a wharf rat is what it is. It's a huge wharf rat. And so it's called the capybara, but you're in Brazil, so it's capybara. That's disgusting, man. If people eat that or I think he, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but I think I oh, think Oh, it's just an other, animal from from there. I just picked it out of the blue. He ate a capybara. <laughs> it was and and it got it was infused with something. You know, steroids or something, and boom, there you go. That's what Ali Abdelaziz should uh, say. It, that should be the excuse, because apparently he said, "Oh, we're gonna have this. We're gonna have this figured out in no time. No time. No, no time at all. We're gonna get rid of it." So he says. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Fabrice, but in all seriousness, he did get flagged by USADA. Which Ted? Uh, which you know? Let's not throw him under the bus because we really don't know. And I know that there's a lot of MMA fans when they hear that news. Uh, they immediately sign that person off as an abuser, you know, and and that's not true, as we know yet. But has he had any past uh, flags? You know, I forget. Um, I should know that, like right off the top of my head. Uh, hold on, let, let's just. Uh... And who was he matched up to fight? Because this was a quick turnaround. His last fight wasn't too long ago. Uh, Lexi Olenek. Okay. Oh, that yeah, was... and he just fought, too, getting another freaking uh, Ezekiel choke. How about, how about that? Right. They, they were going to fight in the main event at UFC in Moscow on September 15th. Now, uh, so, so this happened, and then I think it was earlier today, Dana White, you may have seen this, he tweeted out uh, a smiley face emoji, and that's it. That's all he tweeted out. So, of course, everybody's speculating. People are thinking... <laughs> Oh, did he, did he actually sign That's Habib versus uh, versus Connor? Because that was hmm. when I, when I heard about Verdum versus Olenek, I'm like, what the hell happened in, in Nurmagomedov? Actually, Ted, I, it's probably the 1.5 billion dollar deal that they just agreed on today with ESPN furthering their contract. You think it's going to be an ESPN fight? No, well, no, I think that maybe he tweeted that out because oh, the smiley face emoji. Yeah. Because this morning it was announced, and I tweeted it out. Um, let me pull it up. Uh, uh, at Pure Evil MMA on my Instagram really quick. Because it is huge news, man. Um, hmm. Yeah, but we've known about the ESPN deal for, for a couple weeks now. No, this is on top of that ESPN deal, I believe. They added another $1.5 billion investment on top of it all. Uh, Let me see if I can. Okay, uh, report ESPN's UFC package bid worth one point five billion dollars. That's that's the news that came out today, I guess. So whether that's new or not, that's my speculation. Maybe that's what he was tweeting about, but I'm not sure. That's just what came to my head. All right. First. So yeah, um, there's uh, 
yeah, there's there's lots of um, there's lots of speculation there. But really quick, Ted, the deal for people who did want to know, we're going to talk about it in a second. For five years, man, five year contact with ESPN. Um, that's huge. It's huge. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's a long time too. Let's talk, but you know, ESPN is a very they've gotten very political, and I, I'm just really, really hoping that they leave the politics out of the UFC. You know what I mean? We're talking about fighting here, okay? We're, the politics has no place in it. But they, they get into all sorts of stuff with other sports. You know, they got into the whole Neil Gate thing, you know? And uh, and matter of fact, you probably heard today about that. The NFL owners, or the NFL, decided that, uh, hey, if you're going to kneel, then you're going to get, uh, there's going to be penalties for that, you know? I mean, you're working. Uh, there's something that they expect from you while you're working, I guess my view on it but at the same time freedom of speech i don't know i'm not truly trying to get into it i'm really not <laughs> yeah i'm just hoping that, that that i don't want to get into it either i just hope espn leaves it out when they uh when they talk about the ufc leave the politics out of it do you want to segue into the espn talk well yeah i mean i mean uh yeah what 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 did you want to say what more did you want to say about it, I guess? I, I don't know. Right, so the ESPN deal, a part of this package, Ted, and let me give you a shout out for this because you freaking called it, man. Uh, you called it, it? Yeah, you called it. Ariel Hawani leaving the MMA hour for ESPN to do a show with Chael Son, and that is also uh, a, a new change with, with what's going to be going on with ESPN and MMA. Whether Dana White's happy or mad about it, I don't know. I bet I he's not too that. happy. What, what's what, that? What did I predict? All right, so you predicted that Ariel, and it's not 100% true, but you predicted that Ariel would up and leave the MMA hour at a in a second if he was given a deal from someone like ESPN. Oh, or, I'm or, or, I don't. <laughs> or if he was given a deal with you know NBA because he loves basketball. But now, Ted, now that he's at ESPN, now right. he can get his foot in the door with what his dream job is which is, you know, covering the sport of basketball. And at this point, I kind of believe you, Ted. I wouldn't be surprised if he just would up and leave the sport. Uh, well, another thought. Or what's your thought? No, well, I was going to say, he. All, I mean, his profile picture on Twitter that he's had forever, which is friggin' The Montreal amazing. hat. Yeah, he, he likes the, uh, what, what's that? Expos. Looks Montreal like, Expos. It actually looks like ELB, but it's actually an M. The Montreal Expos. Well, maybe, and that's, a, so that, so yeah, I mean, he's from Canada. I get it. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe he can. You're absolutely right. I mean, you know, uh, maybe he'll get into another sport. <laughs> Here, here's the thing, too. Nate. So lucky. <laughs> here's the thing, though. When I went to broadcasting school, I was trained by all these ESPN guys, and they all warned us: uh, you know, don't get a job at ESPN. Even like shows and stuff, they run through their shows. Uh, they cycle through. It, the show's not a hit. I mean, Errol and Chael, in case you guys don't know. The podcast that they're doing is only going to be a 30 minute podcast. Wow. Yeah. You're leaving the MMA hour. I'm sure they're going to bring, you know, somewhat of the MMA hour over to that. But, you know, Ariel's up and leaving his entire team. Like, you know, the MMA fighting, that's, I mean, they're tight together. It's just, it's a little weird. It's a little weird that he's doing it. And, you know, I didn't think he would ever do something like that, but you called it. And now I, I think that he's going to put, you know, one foot in one and one foot in the other. And when you do that, you're not getting 100% out of that person. In due time, we'll know. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on Ariel moving over? Do you think the UFC is going to be ha happy about that? Because they, they've kind of been wanting to push Ariel to the side. Right. I mean, ever since that, that beef with uh, with Dana White. And firing uh, him from S uh, Fox. Yeah. Right. Right. Because he was, he was uh, playing both sides right there. Uh, you know, he, he was working for a journalism entity in, in uh, MMA fighting, but yet he was also working for... Fox, and uh, so they got upset at him for breaking news on uh, MMA, Bellator. which they wanted to break on Fox. That's really oh. the heart of it. So, um, but now he's going to be working for the company that is going to be in bed with the UFC. Like, well, is Fox going to be totally gone, or are they still going to have something? Uh, I believe Fox is going to be totally gone. I've heard that they've been, you know, leaning towards like the WWF or whatever. I'm not 100. percent 
But, uh, you know, what is left? Out of the equation, out of the picture. I, I believe so, once you go over to ESPN. And, guys, I'm not trying to give – I'm not trying to throw any shade or anything at Ariel or ESPN. I, As a matter of fact, Ted, I think this is a good thing for our sport. ESPN is a great platform for, you know, people who don't pay attention to our sport to, you know, kind of get it shoved in their face a little bit more. Hmm. I mean – well, I, I, but here's the other thing. They, uh, they've been, as far as I understand it, they've been hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging subscriptions. People are dropping ESPN. I mean, I'm, they, they have some to spare because they, they're, they're so big, they're so powerful, popular, you know, but they, ha- they have been. Um, I don't know if, that's, uh, if that has ended, you know what I mean, but for a while there because people were getting tired, as I said again. Or as the I said, politics. People were getting tired of the politics. Um, but anyway... No, I, I mean, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, I think overall, it's a good move for the UFC, and yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, it is the leader, as cool. they say, it's the worldwide leader, and, and you know, now they're owned, or they actually they have been for a while, owned by Disney. Yeah, you know what? Listen, I mean, out of anyone in MMA media, whether you love Arrow or, or you don't like them, if there's anyone that we could pick to kind of represent our sport, um, you know. I think it would be Ariel. I think that because look, who else do they have? I mean, like look at Skip Bayless when he talks about MMA. It makes me so mad because they don't know what they're talking about. So I'm happy that they're bringing Chael and Ariel over. Who's the other dude? The um, he's a boxing guy on HBO, and and then he and then he has another show. You know who I'm talking about? Um, uh, I forget the guy's name. He has uh, Max Kellerman. Kellerman has no idea what the hell he's talking about. Stephen A. Smith has no idea what he's talking about. And it's awful. It's, uh, it's awful. Think, uh, Shannon Sharp has no idea what he's talking about. Those guys are idiots when it comes to MMA. You know, I was a little mad when they didn't have Ariel on the Mayweather-McGregor lead-up. I mean, I have a face in MMA that knows what they're talking about that's going to bring in some good points. And, uh, you know, they missed out on that. They, they picked Brandon Schaub, which I'm not mad about. But, you know, if, if there's someone to pick, my point is, Ariel's the good choice to go over ESPN to represent our sport. I'm sure that Brendan Schaub is pissed that ESPN didn't pick him. I'm sure he's upset about it. <laughs> he's over at Showtime, but nonetheless, what do you guys think about this ESPN so deal? Did it, did, it, did it tank? Uh, it's actually, his Showtime show is actually doing very well below the belt. Yeah, it's, it's doing really well. I, I was a little weary about it, checking it out. At first, because I've been listening to Fighter and Kid for so long or whatnot, but uh, from what I've seen, it, it's pretty creative, and I think it... it it's directed more towards his diehard audience that enjoy like little skits and stuff like that. He did it with Callan and the OG uh, Fighter and the Kid. But uh, either way, Ted, this is also opening up doors for a lot of people like me and you. When Ariel's leaving, you know, MMA fighting, uh, you know, who do they have left over there? Luke Thomas, Chuck Mindenhall. They, I'm, yeah, um, they just lost Wagenheim last week. You know, who's going to take over the MMA hour? I mean, that's a landmark show. In our sport. I didn't know that, that Wagon... I mean, other than the MMA beat, did he actually work for them? I thought he I thought he was a like a Sports Illustrated guy. I think he is a Sports Illustrated guy, but I think he also you know, obviously worked for uh, MMA fighting at, as part of the beat. And I'm sure that was under contract for MMA fighting freelance, right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Travel and stuff like that can be. So, yeah, so, yeah. Sure. Where does where does that show go? Yeah, uh, which is a shame, man, because that that that's the leading MMA news show, whether you love Ariel or not. So, uh, you know, let us know what you guys think about this on Twitter at Evil Under Dash Echo and at Ted Check. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, Luke Thomas, man, I, that guy is just so boring. <laughs> so I, I would rather watch paint dry. I really oh would. I would rather get. Uh, a filling done at the dentist's office. This is this is uh, your beef with him. It just goes back so far. I, I love it. Anyway, uh, well, no, I, I know what you're talking about. He sits in front of the. I, I know what you're talking about. I love the guy. I've never. I mean, you know, I just. I you know, I'm. You know, so I don't know if we could really call it a beef per se, but uh, you're just not into a show. That's it. Yes, cool. That's uh, it. In, no. Yeah. yeah. Hard pass. Hard pass. Yeah. <laughs> hard. Hard pass. All right. So moving forward, Ted. Um, Really quick, I know I didn't bring it up with you, but this week I went out and I purchased The Pact by Cody Garbrandt, the story about him and, and uh, Maddox Maple. So I'm going to be reading this so you guys know how it is. Now, Ted, my quick question to you is, uh, have you ever read an MMA biography before? And if you have, would you? what one would you recommend to people? 
Uh, I read um, GSP's book. Oh, okay. I think I think it's called The Way of the Fight, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, so so uh, I thought it was good. I, I liked it. I liked the way it opened, where it it really describes his um, kind of Spartan like lifestyle, where he, you know he's 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 living alone and and he's uh, major he's, pain. He, he, What's the Canadian major pain? Major. There's the show major pain, uh, the movie I, major pain. But so <laughs> so he, you know, he just uh, uh, it's a very solitary life. He goes and he trains. He comes back and he's home, and that's it. Basically, he's he's just kind of um, he's the kickboxer. <laughs> he's the he's, same character as kickboxer. You know I mean, he, he's not he's not a big partier. Uh, he's a he's kind of an introvert, it seems. So um, yeah, does he I, talk I, about aliens and stuff like that? Like, does he open up about you know his thoughts on? You no, know, I I don't think he. That wasn't top of mind for him when he when he wrote <laughs> okay. this, uh, but. One that I wanted, that I want to read, that that I haven't, which I've heard is very good, is uh, Jens Pulver's book. Uh, what what is the name of that? I heard that one was really good too. Uh, he has a dark um, past. Yeah, what is the name of that one? I forget. Um. Also, I, Chris Lebin has a has his uh, has his book Ronda Rousey. I've read that one. That's an amazing. That's the one I would probably say go read. I might get a lot of shit for that, but uh, I I really enjoyed Rhonda's book. Really? Yeah. Um, and also Ted. Oh, it's just called Little Evil. It, his, well, okay. His first book. His first book was called Little Evil. He did write another one. It looks like where it's called uh, the Wednesday Group that will change the world. But the one I'm thinking of is Little Evil, um, where he was younger and and I think it, it. So yeah, it has to do with his with his childhood and. And how he got into MMA, and then he did, he did win the uh, the lightweight title from BJ Penn, way back when. Yeah, uh, here in Connecticut, I believe. Or no, what? that was the second fight at Mohegan. Or no, it was the first fight. It was the first fight at Mohegan. It went to decision. It was a decision. Yeah, it was yeah. at uh, Mohegan Sun. I'm pretty positive. Correct me if I'm wrong, because my friends went to go see. I don't know if it was the first one or the second one uh, at the casino. But Ted, moving forward. What is next on the news rundown here? I believe we have Bellator 200 that is coming up this weekend. And unfortunately, anytime there is a 200 event like UFC 200, the main event seems to fall out a lot. I mean, let's go back to UFC 200. Originally, it was set up to be Conor McGregor. And they were like, nope, you're not on it because you're not going to be doing media. So peace right. out, Conor. Then they set up John Bones versus DC. That gets pulled off the last second. Me and you reported that live. Yeah. Um and, and here we go, Bellator 200. Main event was Roy Nelson versus Crow Cop. Unfortunately, Crow Cop is injured. And he is a little older for, you know, be holding a main event spot to be promising it on. You know what I mean? So uh, they, they've changed it to Gegard Mousasi. who's going to be going up in against, what, Carvalho, I believe? Yeah, yeah, for the, uh, for the middleweight title. Rafael Carvalho. Uh, uh, thoughts on Crow Cop versus Roy Nelson getting pulled off here, Ted, first? Well, I thought Crow Cop was retired. I mean, fighters do this all the time. But didn't he say a while back, he's like, I got one more fight in me? In Risen, yeah, his last Risen fight. Risen, yeah. And, and I thought the appropriate thing would be uh, at um, a New Year's Eve show because, the, you know, the Japanese do the New Year's Eve thing. They do it up big. Bigger than anybody, they, they have sometimes they'll last a couple of days, but they, they usually have something combat sports related, whether it's sometimes it's a mix, you know, kickboxing, MMA, pro wrestling. Um, but anyway, I thought, oh, that would be great. And and then yeah. I think, well, maybe we could have Crow Cop versus Fedor 2, something like that. Um, I'm just surprised. I'm kind of surprised he's still going, but, you know, hey, I mean, as long as he can, I'm all for it. You know, as long as he's healthy and, and, Still has the skills. I mean, Ted, he had an amazing year in 2016 that was really a resurgence. And again, he did say that he was going to retire. But after leaving the UFC, I mean, when he went to the UFC, it was kind of just like, what happened to Crow Cop? This is not Crow Cop. Uh, and he left and he actually did very well. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, there were, there's there's a theory about that. I mean, if you look at, if you, look at uh, you know, Vanderlei Silva, you look at Crow Cop. Not so much Rampage. 
Theodore. Uh, we were talking about this uh, two weeks ago about Theodore uh, uh, winning in America and stuff. Yeah. Prime fighters coming over. Um, well, with Fedor, it might have been, you know, making the transition from the ring to the cage. But, I mean, I think with with, uh, with Krokop and with Vanderlei, there might have been a little, you know, they, they let's just put it this way. Pride let them do whatever they wanted uh, substance-wise. Vanderlei getting knocked out by Chris Levin. I just reposted that on my, uh, on my Instagram. Remember that one? Chris Lemon. Chris Levin. Oh, Levin. Yeah, Chris yeah. Chris Levin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lebanon. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the, you know, I mean, there's Lemonhead. speculation about that, that, that maybe these guys got off the juice when they came over here. And I got to tell you, Vanderlei Silva looked a lot smaller in the UFC. He really did uh, than, than when he was over in uh, in Pride. So. <laughs> I mean, what a true warrior that that guy is, though, man. Someone who's had surgery on his nose to fight better so he can breathe better. That's like well, Michael Jackson did that so he can sing higher notes. Vanderlei Silva did that so he can... So he can push through freaking uh, the edge of death. <laughs> I remember when Vanderlei Silva did that. That was it was kind of weird though to to look at the guy. I was like, whoa! I mean, like he got a really different nose there. Yeah, yeah. You know? So Ted, now we have Roy Nelson versus Krokop pulled off of this. Were you excited to see that fight first off because it was the rematch? The first fight was so so. Oh, were you excited to see the rematch though? All these years later. Yeah, you know it's kind of flying under my radar. I'm just being totally honest with you, you know. Um, Listen, for Bellator 200, I, I think you would agree with me saying this. I feel like there should have been a different fight there at, as the main event, and I'm sorry, it's Roy, but no, no, no. I, it, no, you, you're right. You're right. That that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Is is uh, it wasn't it wasn't exciting enough for me. Yeah. It wasn't uh, what, what's. Uh, there's no marbles, you know what I mean? It's not for any marbles. You know, like all the marbles. This is for all the marbles. There yeah. weren't any marbles on the table, really. Now, the Grand Prix uh, tournament's already going on, so it's not like they're leading to a title it's shot. A Grand Prix. It's not even a Grand Prix fight. Yeah. It's just a, uh, it's just a heavyweight attraction between two well-known guys who, quite frankly, are past their primes. Um, so, you know, why can't we have an exciting fight with a title on the line? Get a, get a title, and now we do. With Carvalho and and uh, and Musasi, and um, I don't know this Carvalho guy. You know he, he's uh, he's been kind of quietly doing his work and everything, but uh, he's only lost one fight in his entire career. Man, he's he's a tough. He's, I'd pick him over Gegard, honestly. Would you? Would yeah. you? Yeah, I mean Gegard. What he's got like fifty fights underneath him. So I mean it's it's kind of yeah. crazy for me to say that, but uh -huh. look, I don't know where's. Gegard got pretty beat up in his last fight, uh, despite the eye pokes and stuff, you know? I don't know. What are you talking about? Right? The last fight that Gegard had, didn't he get pretty beat up? Even even though he won, he got pretty beat up in that fight. Uh, who was that? Who, was that? Who, who did he fight? I don't even remember. Can't even remember. Beat the hell out of him, huh? Pretty... Oh, let's check it out. Positive that he got poked in the eye a few times. It was right here at Mohegan Sun. It was right here in Connecticut. Well, he's it's <clears throat> his last fight was a win over uh, Alexander Shlomenko. A unanimous there you go. win. There you go. That's it. Shlomenko. Yeah, man. Shlomenko pieced him up a couple of times, even though he got the win. It wasn't wasn't the best fight, man. And here you go. He got him mean event. At least it's for a title, though. Right. So Stipe is saying. Um, uh, Gegard got lucky against the Russian. The Russian. And, uh, yeah, we got Sandeep, the King Singh, G-Man Mule checking in. Aye. Yeah. So, so, listen, this card is actually not that bad now that I'm looking at, Ted. You got Michael Venom Page in the co-main event going up against my boy uh, David Rickles, who's, who's been on the show before. He was a funny guy to talk to. He was another staple over there at Bellator. Uh, a guy who I really wouldn't ever see leaving. Bellator, he was even on like their their version of Ultimate Fighter, not uh, well actually a while ago. <laughs> oh, the the one where where Randy Couture was one coach and and uh, somebody else was the other one. You're talking about that? Yeah, they they they've only done like one, right? One or yeah. two. Yeah. Michael Page was in that. No, not my, David Rickles. Oh, Rickles was. Okay. Yeah, Rickles. Um, you also got Phil Davis growing up against uh, Litton Vassell. That's another exciting fight. Um, you got Aaron Chalmers 
Ashley Griffiths, Anastasia Yanakova on this card. Also, Ted, I forgot to remind you about that one. Wait, the hot, the hot, the hot one. Okay, I got a, I got a better picture for you of her. The hot one. Anastasia Yanakova. Ah, uh, yes. This one. Dear Lord. Yes, sweet baby Jesus. This one. Okay, okay. I'm with you. <laughs> my, oh, my. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, yeah, for 200, they, they really, I, I don't know that they did enough to stack it. Now, I mean, that's just on paper. Um, it could end up being just an absolutely amazing card action-wise. They've had a couple of back-to-back -back good events. Yeah, um, oh, hey, what about, uh, well, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Forget it. Forget, forget that for right now. I was just thinking about hot MMA female MMA fighters. Race, Rachel Ostevich. Isn't she fighting this weekend? Is she? I think she's fighting at uh, UFC uh, uh, Liverpool. I know Jillian Robertson is, and I just interviewed her this afternoon. She's going to be fighting uh, Meatball Molly. Uh, Molly McCann Meatball from... Molly? Yeah, man. And uh, Ronda she, Rousey. She's Ronda saying... Rousey. Ronda Rousey got a meatball right here. <laughs> she's saying that and a lot of people are freaking out that she said this on the show, but she said that she's going for a first round finish over Molly. Hmm. All right. Uh, Candace yeah, Robertson. Like Milosevic, whether she is on this card or not. Uh, let me pull that up really quick. But I'm, I'm sorry, Eddie. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Well, we're talking about hot female. Oh, you know, let's jump into our UFC Liverpool predictions because sure, that's next that. on the list, right? Yes. All right, so let's jump into it. First off, Ted, we got Darren Tilver's Wonder Boy right off the top of your head. Who are you going with here? How are you seeing this fight? Oh, I'm going with Darren Till. Yeah? I'm going with Darren Till. I, I mean, look, I, I know he's he's young, um, but uh, I, th I think he's got what it takes. I think uh, I think he can do it. I, you know, his, his stand-up is great. And, uh, I mean, sure... It's a it's a tall order. It, it could end up looking like the fight that we just saw tonight on the Ultimate Fighter. You know what I mean? Because because Wonder Boy is is this karate phenom, and he's going to want to keep the distance, and he's going to want to fire off kicks, and he's going to want to run around a bit. Um, he's he's, you know. That's what he's going to do. So you you know what his game is, the object, in the your idea, you know, Darren Till needs to do something to counter that. Um, and just go at him full bore. It's so I, crazy. I think he'll be able to do it. it. Ted, it's so crazy watching momentum shift in this sport. I mean, let's go back to early 2016 when uh, Wonderboy Thompson was really building up that momentum where he got that win over Whitaker. Uh, he's getting these spinning uh, heel kick finishes, and then mm -hmm. he gets matched up against Johnny Hendricks, flows through him. Everyone's on board with Wonder Boy. And then he gets matched up against Roy McDonald. And what was Roy McDonald's last fight? That was a chess match. After that fight, it's just been chess message, uh, chess matches with Wonder Boy. Now, this could be because you're, you're at the highest level. It could be because, uh, you know, you're, you're getting faced up against Woodley. And you guys are just, you know, two opposites that, you know, counteracting one another. You think that's going to be the same thing in this fight? Or do you think... You know, we're going to see a first-round finish. You really think it's going to be a, a drag out? I don't think it's going to be a. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a first-round finish. I think it's going to be a finish maybe in the third round for for Darren Till. I think it's going to it's going to take him a little while. Um, you know what I mean to to kind of figure Wonder Boy out, but I th I think he's going to be able to do it. Um, what was I thinking about here? Jeez, I had a thought and whoop went. Right out of my brain. I, just the thing that comes right to my mind, I know that everyone's on board with Darren Till and the pressure, but let's look at the, some of the people that Wonder Boys fought compared to some of the people that Darren Till's fought. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, definitely, without a doubt, uh, you know, um, Wonder Boy has fought, you know, uh, on a higher level. His last loss being to Matt Brown, or real, no, actually, that's false. Woodley, obviously, and then the draw, but... Um, right, you know what I'm saying. He's only fought high talented fighters no. since 2014. 
Robert Whitaker, although although that was um, at a different weight class for for Whitaker. Class. Patrick Cote, Jake Ellenberger, Johnny Hendricks, Rory McDonald. The Ellenberger one, man, that's the spinning heel kick, man. That's what lit it all off. Tyron Woodley twice, and then Jorge Masvidal. Here's another issue, though, Ted. If Wonder Boy wins, he's kind of in a rough position for for next title shot. Uh, and the, the division's kind of tied up. They're really matching this up for for Darren Till to be the successor, in my opinion. Well, I mean, well, we, we've also got to worry about uh, UFC 225. That's for the interim welterweight belt. Yeah, Kobe and RDA. Kobe and RDA, right? That's, so that's really guys. who's next. Yeah. You got you got the winner of this one, Darren Till and and uh, Wonder Boy. Uh, then then you got uh, Kamaru Usman thinking he's got the next shot because he's on an eight fight win streak. No, no, no. I mean, the guy is. Uh, oh, it, did you hear his excuse this time? Well, I broke both my hands. Backstage, uh, well, did you see what was going on there? That was, uh, someone should have said something or stopped what was going on backstage. His uh, his team was just they were breaking in his glove, which I believe is illegal yeah. to do, like smashing against walls and stuff. And uh, yeah, he said he broke both of his hands in this fight. Up that because fighters break their hands all the time in MMA or a lot, right? And I, this is the first time I've ever heard of of or seen. Anybody taking a, a glove and whacking it against the wall. I, I, I don't know. I just don't know how much. I don't know what, what's in those gloves anyway. Because remember it used to be uh, with boxing gloves, it was horse hair. And you could kind of pull that horse hair apart so that so that the knuckles were kind of a little bit more exposed. Yeah. I, 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 doubt, I don't think there's horse hair in, in the MMA gloves. I don't know what's in them. But how much are you going to break it down just by bam, 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 whacking it against the wall a little bit? I mean – Unless there was more footage than what we saw, because that one clip was just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He really he broke it down that much t to the point that I mean, unless unless Kamaru Usman just has brittle hands, I, I don't know. He broke both his. Hands. I I think he's one. He's he's settling into this. I've got an excuse every time I fight. Thirty percent was the one fight. Now he's it broke both hands. What's it going to be next fight? It's going to be another excuse. Hey, you know, that's something that it, it's better to be left on set, right? There, there's, yeah, there, there's that point of view. People say, you know, that you should never talk about your, your, uh, your. Cause he's, he's trying to impress people by being like, oh, that was me at 30%. Oh, I had two broken hands. But really it, it's, it's not impressing anybody. It's looking, it, it looks bad is what it, it looks like. It comes off as you're making excuses or, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Don't talk, about the, don't talk about the, you know, it, sh it should not be. You know, I won, but, you know, no, just just leave it. People don't want to hear it. Circling back to Darren Tillman, I mean, this is a hard opportunity for him. He's fighting in Liverpool, and the kid's oh. only 25 years old now. I make up people tweeting me when they hear this saying, well, you know, he's been, you know, doing Muay Thai his entire life. I don't know. It's just just the experience, the IQ of Wonder Boy, how smart he is with game plans. I mean, if we're looking at Cowboy's fight that he had with Darren Till, the blueprint, I'm not the first one to say this, the, bru the blueprint for beating Cowboy is out there. Blitz him in the first round, surprise him, and you can get the knockout if you hit him hard enough. Um, right. With Wonder Boy, it's not going to be that easy to, to finish Wonder Boy. No, no, it definitely isn't. Um, but, at, you know, at 35 years old, as is, is time running out for him? I don't I mean, know. Yeah, he got rocked against, against Woodley, where he's, you know, Cooped up in the corner of that cage and in that, what was it, the first or the second fight? You, you, I think it was the My first opinion. fight. I mean, I don't yeah, remember, just, but either way, he got rocked in both those fights pretty hard. But if Woodley could have knocked him out, can, can tell, I don't know. I don't know. Right. I, I mean, we, we didn't see the Wonder Boy that we're used to. We saw a very tentative Wonder Boy in, the, in those Woodley fights, I thought. Yeah. For the most part. Because he was fearful of the, of the right hand and he was fearful of the takedown. Now that I don't think you can say that that applies necessarily to Darren Till. Darren Till is is uh, is a striker. Um, does he really have knockout power per se? Well, I mean, you know, you watch some of his training uh, training clips, and and he's uh, you know he's he's throwing some some heavy leather. Uh, but I don't I don't know that he has the wrestling chops. If you uh, look so at the fight that he had before the Cowboy fight, he got. I mean, he won the fight, but he got rocked a, a couple of times, and he, he kind of like tries to shake it off, being like, "No, it didn't hurt." But he got he got rocked a couple of times. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I watched that fight a, a few months ago, but 
Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think Wonder Boy got this. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, sorry. I think we're going to see a more aggressive Wonder Boy, but um, you know, I, I, Darren Till, I think, is just going to come straight at him. And here's and try to make it a fight in a phone booth kind of thing. Here's the other thing, Ted. If Till can walk out with the you know the Conor McGregor swagger, the confidence, I think that's what's kind of kind of separated in the fight, which you know happens because. Do you agree with me on this? It kind of feels like Wonder Boy was pressured into this fight instead of wanting it, and that could be an issue. Yeah, I, I think it wasn't Till kind of pursuing him. Yeah, I yeah, think, I, I think Till was. I mean, he, I think Wonder Boy thought if he if he held out, maybe he could get uh, a better deal. You know, uh, Woodley again, but he, I, you know, I think he still needs to prove himself. He he's not quite there yet. He had two shots. He needs to he needs to rack up a number of wins. Uh, I don't know how many exactly, but you know. I agree. I 100 percent agree. He's, he's, unless Woodley loses that belt, I do not see him getting another shot. And it's a shame because if you break it down and look at it, it's not it's not really fair because that first fight was a draw, right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it was only right to do that rematch. So it's not like it's not his fault. However, he. It's just too soon. It's it's still too soon. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see I, that. I, I just don't. Think, I don't think people are interested. Yeah. When Dana White says no one wants to see it, uh, I don't think you're going to be able to get it. Um, last thoughts on this fight, Ted. Uh, you know, you got Till, who's been fighting in the UFC since 2015, but really hasn't shined until most recently. Uh, Wonder right. Boy started in 2012. He's got 11 fights in the UFC compared to Till's four. Um, I just, I really think that veteran status is what's going to outshine him in those later rounds. Uh, I, I'd say third or fourth round finish for Wonder Boy. What's your prediction here, Ted? Third round finish for Till. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. For, I, I forgot to ask you, where are you watching this fight? Because it is also, let, let me inform our listeners, it's Sunday, not Saturday. It's Sunday morning, uh, in case you guys didn't know that. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Oh crap! Yeah, I don't think a lot. I really don't think a lot of people knew that. It's uh, starting at, but really early. It's starting at 10 a.m. here in the yeah, East Coast. Yeah. Oh my god! Because I'm gonna have to work. Shit. On a Sunday, on. Oh, I work every Sunday pretty much, unless wow. I have to put off. I work Sunday through Thursday. Well, here's the good thing: if you guys have FS1 and you have the app, or you you know you have uh, Fox Sports Go app, you can watch it as soon as the fight's over. I just discovered it. You can watch Ultimate Fighter as well. Fucking love the app. Can't do that with my Xfinity on demand. <laughs> Sorry, it reminded me of something. But Ted, uh, uh, yeah. you know that—that's your prediction for third round, fourth round, third round, third and round. you're not—you're not going to be able to watch the fights, unfortunately. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Maybe, we'll maybe, see maybe I can. All right. Uh, so, our... sorry. No, go ahead, man. So our co-main event, we got Neil Magny going up against. Uh, Craig the Thundercat White. Now, Craig White, no one really knows about this guy. He doesn't even have a picture on UFC.com, but we know an awful lot about Neil Magny. 30 years old, 27 record, 18 fights in the UFC since joining in 2013, and he's coming off a win to Carlos Condit most recently. Um, but where did this opponent come out of? Like, I, I'm, I'm sure there's something out there. I, I Well, I mean, it was because... Um... Uh, Did somebody got, get injured? Yes, yeah, somebody got injured. Yeah. Okay. I don't know That's who. Right. I mean, yeah, this wasn't his original. It was Gunnar Nelson. Oh, Gunnar Nelson uh, was going to fight, and then uh, promotional newcomer Craig White announced as Magny's new opponent hmm. after uh, Nelson pulled due to a knee injury. Um, yeah, uh, Craig White is so new, he doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Damn man, the Thundercat. I don't know any and a Thundercat. That's <laughs> I remember that show. Here's all I know about Craig uh, the Thundercat White. He's 14 and seven. He's 27 years old, so pretty much the same age as uh, as Neil. And he's a grappling specialist. Hmm. That's all we know about the mysterious Thundercat, Craig the White. Thundercat. Thundercat. Um, Ted, any other fights on this card that stand out to you? Uh, and, and obviously, my prediction is Neil Magny. To take that fight. I'll be releasing my predictions on Twitter and Instagram. I'm sure Ted will as well on Twitter. But uh, it, your pick for that fight, Ted? 
Uh, let's see here. Well, this oh for oh, for that one. Oh, yeah. I'll have to go with Neil Magny. I, I I honestly I just I don't know the other guy. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know the man. You know. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I think that's going to be a win for uh, for him. Oh, check this fight out. This should be a good one. Jason Knight. Mm-hmm. Who, don't, don't they call him uh, uh, Hick Diaz? Yeah. Hick Diaz. Yeah. Jason yeah, yeah. Knight versus uh, Makwan Amir Khani. Mr. Finland. You know, Amir Khani. He's he's. When's the last time he's fought? Let's check that out. March of 2017 against Arnold Allen, who's who's also on this card. Arnold Allen is also on the card. Right above above them, Arnold Allen versus another guy who doesn't have a Wikipedia page, Mads Burnell. But Jason Knight, man, he really needs to get back on track here. Um, I believe he's coming off, let's see, one, two, two losses. He had a loss at UFC 214 against Ricardo Lamas, and then another loss against Gabriel Benitez uh, in December of last year. So, I right. mean, there was a lot of momentum behind Jason Knight. In case there's any new MMA fans tuning in, this is a guy that you want to watch. And I'm really crossing my fingers on this one because I want this guy to win. But Amir Khani, man, he's not going to be easy by any means at all. Uh, from what we've known about Amir Khani, man, he's going to be looking for that submission. And I, I see this fight ending in submission, whether it's, you know, Jason or Amir Khani. I'm rooting for Jason. I don't know. Leaning towards Amir Khani. Thoughts, Ted? Uh, well, and, and don't forget, uh, Amir Khani uh, also, um, he had that TKO flying knee and punches against Andy Ogle. So uh, he's, he's a versatile fighter. Um, I think, I mean, that th- this this fight has the potential to be fight of the night. I mean, sure, sure so could Thompson versus Till. But um, this could be like one of these kind of almost like a sleeper fight. You know what I mean? You, you may not think, you know, if people don't, if people don't recognize the fighters' names, you know, they might be surprised. And Jason Knight, though, I mean, there's no stopping that guy. Uh, he's literally, like, when he was out on his feet in one of his last fights, the ref had to step in and stop it. He's kind of like a Justin Gaethje to where there is no off. You're not going to turn this guy off. He's going to literally need to be breaking down, uh, combusting, oh, you know, like, like a broken robot or whatever before you're going to be able to get the finish. You're not going to be able to finish yeah. Uh, shut the lights out on, on Jason Knight. And something I like about Jason Knight, which he brought up in his in his post fight speech after one of his last losses, is how he just he was just he wasn't crushed by it. He was even more motivated by it. And that's a scary thing to look out for in professional fighters, man, especially at this level. So watch out for Jason Knight. Like Ted said, this is definitely a potential fight of the night. Ted, closing thoughts yeah. on this card here, um, really quick. You got Davy Grant against Bermudez. Davy Grant was on that season of Ultimate Fighter with Ronda Rousey. My heart's with him. Uh, I'm rooting for Bermudez. Um, Ted, do you know much about either of those two guys? Uh, oh, hold on. Damn it. I, just, I had the card up, and then I clicked off of it. Well, you got uh, Bermudez, man, 12-0, uh, fighting out of Joe Giannotti's gym from the season of Ultimate Fighter over at South Shore, uh, making his debut. I believe he was on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Uh, he's coming off a win, though, over Albert Morales back in February. So most recently, uh, the, the Bermuda's Triangle. Man. So representing the East Coast, going up against Davey Grant. Like I said, my heart's there with Davey. I'm going with Bermuda's on this one, though, by finish. That's another sleeper fight there. Huh. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got to be honest with you, Eddie. I'm not, uh, you know, these guys are kind of under my radar. But uh, hopefully I can catch the fight, and then I'll be uh, up to speed on that. Uh, last but not least, guys. Uh, me and Ted will. I'll be making my predictions on Twitter. I'll be releasing that, and then the UFC Pick'em League. Ted, have you joined UFC Pick'em League yet? Are you on that yet? To mm, make your predictions on there? No. I don't. UFC.com fantasy. I don't think so. All right. So last thoughts here, <laughs> guys. I've interviewed. I've interviewed Jillian Robertson, who's going to be going up against Molly Meatball. That interview I'll be playing at the end of this show right here. I'll just tag it right on the end here. For everyone to listen to because you're hearing the prediction show anyway so stay tuned for that or you can check it out on youtube at pure evil mma uh, she's going up against molly meatball so let us know what you guys think about that interview and about that fight let us know what your predictions are on twitter at evil under dash echo the evil underscore ecco and also ted check's page at ted check that's t-e-d-c-z-e-c-h closing thoughts here ted on this card uh, on paper how do you think that it's, it rates out out of 10 on paper 
Well, oh, geez. I mean... Huh. For uh, Liverpool card? I mean, I would guess that some of these people that we don't know about are, are from England. I mean, aside from Till, right? I mean, that, that would that's usually the idea. Like, I mean, you, you look at UFC Brazil cards. One half of the card is Brazil. It's Bra- oh, Brazil yeah. versus the world. Yep. Yeah, it, it's, so hopefully they've got uh, – I, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be uh, – the, the venue, I'm sure it's going to be off the hook. I, I'm sure it's just it's going to explode. You know what I mean? It, um, at the Echo Arena in Liverpool. Oh yeah, so, it always uh, does. It always does. Yeah, so so I think I think that's going to be exciting. That you know the crowd's going to be just electrified. Um, I'm excited for the main event. I'm excited for Knight versus Amir Khani. Some of these other ones, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, not so not so no sure. No Rachel Ostevich, by the way, guys. No, Here's- no, no. I, I, she she I know she's got a fight coming up. I just I don't know. I don't even want to say what I think. You know, I, I don't know when. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I'm just hoping for for good, exciting fights. I, I just, you know. Um. But we have Bellator on Saturday, followed by Sunday uh, UFC. I kind of like when that happens, though. But yeah, what, what's your rating on paper, Ted? You think it's better than the Bellator card, or you think it's kind of, you know, even par with Bellator? I don't Bellator? know. I don't see because... Bellator's got a shot here to be the card of the weekend. I love that. Yeah, it has yeah. a shot. Well, competition is. Hey, I'll just say this. I mean, it 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 competition is great for everybody. Yeah. Well, except for Bellator and the UFC. It's good for us, you know, the fans. It's good for the fighters. Um, you know, if the UFC had its way, it would be the only. Well, maybe not the only one in the entire world because they need feeder organizations, but uh, they need proving grounds. But, um, yeah, it, but we benefit. You know what I mean? That's great. So, so there it is, guys. Your 90 minutes of evil and intoxicated. We broke down Ultimate Fighter Season 27. We broke down some of the latest MMA news. Ted, before we let you go, before we sign out, uh, what did you release this week on your, on your uh, YouTube channel that people can check out? Well, I had one uh, on the... Um... On on uh, Verdum today we, today I did a little thing on on uh, you know Verdum and uh, you know my theory about him eating that large uh, rodent. <laughs> so talk about that. Uh, it was earlier in the week. What was I talking about? Oh my god! It, I, I usually you know sometimes I do these uh, the chats in the in the middle of the day on my lunch break. So well, you're good with people that don't know you. Anytime there's breaking news, you're all over it on, on your YouTube page. I'll try. Yeah. I'm really trying. Uh, but uh, hold on. I'll, I'll tell you in just one second. Let me, let me just get to it real quick. Um, let's see here. So, uh, yeah, also Colby Covington, uh, he did a video talking about nerds and virgins. So I, I made up the word nerdgens. Nerdgens are nerds and virgins together. And he, okay. He keeps, uh, you know, he, you know, he was at that show that was, it was like a porn site, but they, and they yeah, had some, the cam soda. What is it? it? It was cam soda. My boy Bruce fought a crazy horse or, or felony, so to say. Yeah. Uh, cam soda. So I think he was with a cam soda girl. He's always got these uh, actresses uh, that he's hanging out with, you know. Um, so anyway, yeah. And then, uh, oh, well. Uh, I guess it was Monday or Tuesday, I said, we know who will headline UFC Moscow. And we did know, and that was before Verdum got busted. So, um, yeah, so so I've got those two videos. Those are the two latest videos this week. My last thing I want to talk with you about is Chuck Liddell, man. What what was your thoughts on him returning? Uh, You know, and really quick, 20 years ago this week was Chuck Liddell's uh, MMA debut at UFC 17, where he beat... No Hernandez via unanimous decision 20 years ago. Uh, that was his MMA debut or his UFC debut? Uh, it says MMA debut. Oh, really? Yeah. Because, geez, I thought it was before. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I, I know he fought uh, a bare knuckle fight in Brazil, but maybe that was uh, not his first fight. Because that, that was against uh, Jose Pele Landy Johns. Well, what, what's your thoughts? Do you think it's a good idea for him to return? Do you want to see him fight? You know, that was his first fight. No, Hernandez was his first professional fight, and it wasn't in the UFC. Nope. Then, then came the Landy Johns fight. It was thirty minutes, a thirty, Jeez. a thirty-minute bare-knuckle fight that he won by decision. 
Wow. Anyway, Chuck Liddell, uh, I think I think he should stay retired. Yeah, I uh, figured you would say that. I mean, he's Dana, fifty years old almost, man. It's it's Dana hard. White, Dana White had a reason for retiring him way back when. And I mean, I know the way that fighters are. They always think true fighters always think they got one more fight in them. You know, put me in coach. I'm ready to play, you know, but uh, I, you know, we're talking about getting your brain scrambled. And um, yeah, I, I and, and I, I think it's kind of the hot potato. No, nobody wants it. I'm sure he reached out to the UFC. I'm sure he reached out to Bellator. But uh, here we go. Oscar De La Hoya says he's willing to put it on. I mean, I, I'm kind of surprised it wasn't Bellator picking that fight up. But uh, there you go, guys. What are your thoughts about this? That was our last thing. Let us know on Twitter, evil under dash echo or at Ted Check. Is there any questions in the chat room before we sign out here, Ted? Well, I was just going to say one other thing real quick. Maybe they maybe they learned their lesson. You know, they, they start putting on the, uh, the the fights with the with the Geritol posse. And, you know, the last few haven't worked out so well. You know, uh, Shamrock Ken yeah. versus Kimbo, Ken Shamrock versus Hoist Gracie. Kimbo versus Dada 5000. You know, those fights have not. Maybe the ratings were great, but they were shitter fights. Um, anyway, chat room. Um, let's see. I love how you got to use the bannerang tonight, too. The bannerang. Yes, we did. We, we got rid of Phil and me cracking, you know. Mm -hmm. He's got a great name, uh, but he was just obsessed with, with ass shots, so he can go do that somewhere else. Yeah. Um, because I, I said, I said, Phil, relax. Go look at your own ass. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ. Um, there was some talk about uh, Colby Covington here. G-Man saying, Colby Covington versus RDA is a tough one to pick. I literally could see RDA going in and picking him apart, or I could totally see Kobe Covington just beating on him for five rounds and getting the decision. I don't uh, know. I, I think RDA takes that fight. I think that Mayu was piecing up Kobe Covington. I think RDA is definitely going to piece him up. I don't know though. I think I think Colby's made some uh, some strides in his uh, in his striking. I like the way he looks as of late. Um, he's unpredictable, you know, spinning back fists and stuff like that. Spinning clips, have, you know, he, he's he's shown that uh, to me, you know, that that he's um, he's learning. He's learning. He's, he's adding skills. He's getting more skilled. But uh, will it be enough? That, that's the big question. But uh, Mike Lavalle is saying uh, that will be Darren Till's downfall. If he comes slamming in like a linebacker, Wonderboy is going to catch him. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Right? Wonderboy's hoping for that, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and I think Till knows that. So Till's got a counter game. Plan. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to be. It's going to be interesting to see who what the game plans are going to be and who can execute the game plan. This is huge, man. This is a huge fight for Darren Till, and it's going down this weekend. I can't wait for it. I think he's excited about, you know, like some people get jitters. Uh, I think Fabricio Verdum, you know, when he fought in Brazil, he came in <laughs> against Stipe. I think because he was just, you know, uh, so, so uh, I think the pressure got to him. You know, but uh, Darren Till, I think, is going to feed off it. I, he's just, he's just pumped. Yeah, it like Conor McGregor. When Conor McGregor walked out for UFC 205, you felt you, you felt it extruding from his. You felt the energy. You mm -hmm. felt his aura. Darren Till, I think the UFC is hoping for that same presentation from Darren Till, and we'll find out this weekend. We certainly will find out this weekend. Yeah, I, I think I think the crowd's just going to tear the roof off the place, and um, yeah, so um, I, I I think Darren Till is going to is going to be able to. I think he's going to have a good game plan, and he's going to execute. Ted's got till I got Wonder Boy right there, baby. There right we go. There. Last Let's question. Any 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 last questions? Uh, um, uh, Ken Shiro says I I I Ooh. like it. I got four hundred dollars on till. We're gonna ride or die together, baby. Hey, hey, hey Ken Shiro, what's up, brother? Oh, yes. yeah, I didn't know Ken Shiro oh, was tuning in. Here's a good one. What does everyone think about Dana White's cryptic smiley face? What does it mean? Okay, so we kind of brushed on this earlier, but, uh, you know, Ted, why don't you bring this back up? I got I to gotta, uh, scratch my throat. Let me scratch my throat. What the fuck, bro? 
<laughs> That's weird, man. You like that? Um, no. Anyway, yeah, so, so yeah, weird. the speculation. Did it, does it mean that he signed <laughs> Namaga Madoff versus Conor McGregor? Does it mean that uh, – does it have to do with the ESPN deal? I don't know. I don't know. Ted, just to think about people listening to this podcast in their car and having to hear that is hilarious. It's me scratching my throat <laughs> with my throat. The, the, the side speakers. <laughs> it's, it's, these you fucking assholes. <laughs> you never heard anyone do that before? You've done some stuff, man, on this show, but not noises like that. I mean, <laughs> not, nothing nothing quite like that. No, not, not to that level. But uh, uh, All right. On that note. That's on that, that on that note, guys, uh, really quick, make sure you are following Ted and me on Twitter at evil under dash echo. That's E V I L underscore E C C L and Ted Check at T D C C H. My Instagram is at Pure Evil MMA. Get all the latest Pure Evil MMA content at myminnews.com. It's been a blast talking with you guys tonight. Uh, Ultimate Fighter season twenty seven, man. I'm loving this season, and uh, from what we're seeing with the ratings, it's going up. So could this be the saving point? Or is this the final goodbye? Let us know what you guys think on Twitter. Guys, have a great night. White knuckles to the end. Behave yourselves. I was gonna. I was gonna. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a pretty awesome uh, landmark right there. What I saw you post on that was I, I could not stop laughing. Um, you said, for my next opponent, you better watch out and get one of these post anti armbar suits. That was absolutely genius. That was hilarious. I love seeing stuff like that. So are, are, are you planning on going for a submission finish? Or are you leaning towards more of like, you know, because I remember in this season, Ultimate Fighter, Justin was trying to get you to trust more in your striking. Is that something that you've been working on uh, evolving with? It's definitely something I've been working on constantly. And my striking has definitely been getting better. But like I said, I feel like Molly's way to win would be on the feet. That's mm. the, where she's yeah. the strongest. That's where she's going to be the best. So I... So, at first round, you're calling. And I remember the second that uh, Robert TQ Turnquest hit me up. He was like, man, Jillian's got a fight. I can't tell you who it's against, but it's a real good one. And I am so happy as soon as this fight was announced because Molly has a pretty big name over in England. Uh, how familiar with you of, with her before this fight got matched up? I mean, you've even on that season Ultimate Fighter, I think that was a good uh, starting place for you to have, you know, some experience against people like Barb, who was the Invicta FC champion. Um, you know, and, and the way that that season went with, um, you know, you getting that finish after the finale was just great momentum building your way. And now here you are going against Molly. So it seems like the UFC is really trusting you here to go in there and put on an exciting fight. Uh, we hear you calling out first round finish. Um, but what is your, what has your team been working on with you? Because, you know, you're still so new to the sport. I mean, you, you, you just tweeted on uh, saying that you just started like kickboxing seven years ago. So this is all got to be still so surreal still, isn't it? Oh, it's 100% yeah. surreal. Um, actually, a year ago today was the Tough 26 tryout. Wow. So that's just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like in a year, all this has happened. And it's just everything happened so fast. The fact that I even get to go to Liverpool and be able to fight there is just, it's a hundred percent surreal to me. So, what does your family think about you going out to Liverpool? Are they kind of jealous? Because I mean, that's a bucket list thing to do. Um, my brother is actually going to be flying out there with me, so that's going to be awesome to have one person cheering for me in the crowd at least going into her hometown. But um, my mom and dad are definitely nervous. They're just always worried about their little girl, especially when I'm getting punched in the face. So they don't want to <laughs> see that, but. They're excited for me and they know I can do it. So let's let's rewind a little bit and talk about your last fight. I know that you got like that, you know, that 10K bonus finish. Uh, did you get that money yet? Were you able to, you know, splurge a little bit, treat yourself out, maybe treat the girls out? Um, all I have done with my paycheck since my last fight was I put it on 100% towards my training camp and everything that I have going on down to Coconut Creek, so now I'm about 10 minutes away. Wow. And that's all I've really done with my whole paycheck is just dedicated to my training. Wow, that's that's, all, that's awesome because I remember, um, you know, the champion, Nico, she was saying that she was still living at her parents' house. So this was huge for you girls to, you know, kind of get that uh, up and up and go feeling, get out of the get out of the nest, something that we all have to do at some point. Has it been weird, you know, being away from home, being away from mom and dad? Geez, there, there really is no better gym for you to be at. But, yeah, I mean, ATT you're training with, you know, let's start from one of my favorites, Trish Cicero, who, you know, maybe not a lot of people are familiar with, but she is such a sweetheart. Oh, yeah, definitely. We have a huge girls team, probably about 15 to 20 girls. Well, yeah, you got Joanna there. You got Amanda Nunez. I mean, you're around all these champions. It's got to be um, more of a reality to you to be around those champions as well. Uh, 
champions, and that's all I'm ever gonna be. So what about um, you know, cause Trish, what what's going on with her? Is uh, you know, what's been going on with her? Cause she's been pretty quiet as of late. Um, I'm not sure 100. I know, like, I believe a month ago she had uh, another professional fight, and then uh, I want to say she competed in the uh, Miami Open. A lot of those girls have just been trained strictly to get ready for the Miami Open, so she hasn't been a big part of my camp just because of that. Oh, okay. Well, there's one more other thing I want to congratulate you on with your team. You got your, uh, what did you get, your brown belt? Yes. Congratulations on that. Um, and also, you, so you, you got to be missing your dog, too, because you're always posting about, uh, what's his name, Rob the Dog? Rob the Dog? Yes, uh, Robin. He's probably my best friend, and I miss him more than anything. I actually took him back to my parents' house last week, too, and I get everything ready this week so I would be ready to go to Liverpool and it's just been killing me but it's so weird going home and not having him welcoming me there <laughs> you know what you love him so much you even made an Instagram account for people to follow and let me just throw that out there for everybody if you guys want to go follow Rob the dog go follow him at, at Rob the dog 772 uh, 772 is it a thing with fighters like every fighter I've interviewed has a pit bull I mean, what's your interest with, with pit bulls? Is that something you've had since you were a little girl? Um, I honestly just been in love with animals since I was little. I, all I ever did before fighting was volunteer with animals. I volunteered at the Humane Society and a wildlife sanctuary and a horse rescue. And I worked at the Humane Society for probably four or five years. And Robin was actually at the Humane Society for over a year. And in that year period, I just fell in love with him more than anything. He's, something special he's got a personality to him you know i just picked up two rats and there are so many people out there that are still like i mean it's the mascots of the show pure evil mma i got you know pet rats so you know there's still so many people out there that think of sewer rats but they're really such awesome animals i i'm a huge animal lover myself and it's such a comforting tool as well people don't realize like pets they're, they're so comforting at the end of the day and i'm sure you miss uh rob so much right now too I mean, even like Rose Namahunez brings her dog around, even to like the, the media scrums and stuff like that. Have you got Rob his certificates or anything like that to be like, uh, uh, what are they, uh, mentor dogs or what, what are they called? Uh, service dog. Service dog. There you go. Is he a service yeah. dog? He is not right now, but that's definitely something that I'm going to be looking into. Yeah. And like I said, it's I mean, if you're a true pet lover, it's hard to even like go into Walmart without them. So with with the the certificate, you can go into Walmart. But moving on, you said you you're looking for this first round finish here. H have you talked to your opponent? Have you ever met her before? No, I've never met her before. Um, I haven't talked to her either. I've seen she's talked a little bit about me on social media, but I've been trying to stay out of that. <laughs> but no, I've never met her. Well, before we let you go, I just want to let you know that the UFC, like, if you look at all the stats and everything, they have you ranked up at 100% for grappling. So we really hope that you can go in there and get this this finish on there because it would be an amazing finish against Molly, and we're wishing you best of skill. That would be a huge momentum boost. And, uh, you know, you're, you're climbing the ranks. Last time I checked, I think you are 11th in 11th after your last fight at, uh, at flyweight. So this would be a huge jump up. Uh in my books, if Molly's anywhere on the ranks, I think she's definitely a top 10 opponent, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely. Like yeah. I, said, I, I was a fan of hers before I uh, before I knew that I was going to fight her, and I definitely feel like this is a serious fight to go into. She's going to bring her best, I'm going to bring my best, and it's going to be a war. Before I let you go, is there anything else that you want to get out there? Anything off your chest? Uh, words to your opponent? Jillian, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to seeing your smile on TV again. You have one of the prettiest smiles out there, guys. Make sure you're following Jillian at Savage underscore UFC. Thank you so much. We wish you best of skill. Oh, thank you. Have a good one, Jillian. You too. There you go, guys. Jillian Roberts joining us on Pure Evil MMA. One of my favorite people to interview, too. She's so nice. She's so quiet. And I really feel like if you ran into her on the street, if you didn't know who she was, you would never guess 
this girl's a fighter. I mean, she's so young too, 22 years old. She's training with some of the best people in her sport, like Joanna Young Jacek, like Amanda Nunes. And I, I threw up Trish's name because Trish is another one that you guys need to keep your eye on. You know, training down there at ATT, you have Dean Thomas. It, it's just a perfect place to go blossom as a young up and coming fighter. So let me know what you guys think about this weekend. I didn't get her pick. That's one thing I didn't ask her who her pick was for that main event. But don't worry because I'm going to be coming at you guys with the UFC Liverpool breakdown on Pure Evil MMA podcast today. Matter of fact, tonight. So I'm looking forward to that. This interview will also be up on the podcast and at MyMMAnews.com. Guys, have a great day. Tonight, Ultimate Fighter Season 27, I think Episode 5 or Episode 6. And then Suman Makatran, who's fighting tonight, is going to be joining me on Pure Evil MMA. Uh, me and Ted Checker are going to be going live tonight, guys. 10 or 11 o'clock Eastern time, directly after the Ultimate Fighter. Don't want to miss it. We're going to be covering all the latest MMA news uh, predictions with this weekend's fight, like I said. Guys, last but not least, white knuckles to the end. Behave yourselves.